In this video, we're going to take a look at topic 5.4, non-Mendelian genetics. Gregor Mendel presented his findings, Experiments on Plant Hybridization, in 1865, and they were published a year later. However, it wasn't until 1900, 16 years after Mendel's death, that scientists began to realize the full significance of his work. Although significantly much more about genetics has been learned since then, Mendel's laws of inheritance, the law of dominance, the law of segregation, and the law of independent assortment were pivotal in establishing that new field of biology. We have also discovered that far more complex patterns of inheritance deviate from Mendel's understanding and his laws. Non-Mendelian inheritance patterns comprise the majority of inheritance patterns in diploid organisms. Mendel's law of dominance states that individuals who've received two different alleles for a given trait will display the dominant phenotype. Those individuals that are heterozygous and those that are homozygous dominant have the same phenotype since the dominant allele effectively masks the recessive one so that it is not expressed in the phenotype. Only individuals with two recessive alleles, homozygous recessive, will present the recessive phenotype. But what possible phenotypes result when, for a given trait, there is no truly dominant allele? This is the case with incomplete dominance. In certain varieties of snapdragon flowers, three distinct phenotypes exist, red, white, and pink. Individuals that are homozygous, like those in the parental generation in this diagram, display the phenotype for the only alleles they possess. Carrying two red alleles for color results in a red phenotype, and carrying two white alleles results in a white phenotype. But it's the heterozygous individuals that have received one red and one white allele that display a unique blended or mixed phenotype that is not present in the parental generation. For traits that are co-dominant, more than one equally dominant to each other allele exists. Just as with incomplete dominance, the heterozygous individuals that possess two equally dominant alleles express a unique phenotype. One such example can be seen in the coat color of certain varieties of cattle. Homozygous individuals with two red alleles have a reddish, rust-colored coat, and those that are homozygous with two white alleles have a white coat. Because those two alleles are equally dominant to each other, a heterozygous individual displays a red and white spotted coat called roan. Both of the parental phenotypes are visible in sections of the offspring's coat. A similar coloration, called ermanette, is seen in the plumage of heterozygous chickens. A classic example of codominance in humans is the ABO blood group system. The A and B alleles are completely dominant over the O allele, but are equally dominant to each other. A person heterozygous for blood type AB would present both A and B proteins on their red blood cells. The manner in which an animal's biological sex is determined varies from species to species. In mammals XY system, it is the females that are homogametic since they possess two of the same sex chromosome. Males, on the other hand, are heterogametic, possessing one X and one Y chromosome. For birds and many species of fish, the opposite is true in the ZW system. It is the males that possess two like sex chromosomes, and females have two different ones. In some insect species, the X0 system determines an individual's biological sex. Females carry two sex chromosomes, whereas males only have one. In many colony species of insect, like bees and ants, females are diploid and males are haploid. 
For genes that are found on sex chromosomes, inheritance patterns differ from those found on autosomes. Any given species, the individuals that have different sex chromosomes only receive one allele for each of the genes present on them. Human females have two X chromosomes, and therefore two copies of every gene located on the X chromosome. But since males only have one X chromosome, and therefore only one copy of each gene on the X chromosome, disorders that result from mutations in sex-linked genes are more common in males. Commonly used examples of sex-linked disorders include color blindness and hemophilia, which results in a diminished ability of blood to clot properly when an injury occurs. In order for a female to be a hemophiliac, she would require two recessive alleles, whereas males only need one. Although females and males can be carriers for autosomal recessive disorders, only females can be carriers for sex-linked recessive disorders. There are many examples of phenotypic traits that are the result of a single gene. As a matter of fact, we've seen a number of them in this video alone. Human blood type, coat color in cattle, and hemophilia. However, for many traits, more than one gene is involved in their expression. A polygenic trait is one in which the genotypes for two or more genes are collectively responsible for the phenotype that results. One example can be seen in the coat coloration of some animals such as mice. It is the interaction of two genes that determine whether or not an individual expresses white fur if they are homozygous recessive for the gene represented C, black fur if they are homozygous for the recessive gene represented A, or agouti for any of the other possible genotypes. Polygenic traits are not limited to animals and can be illustrated with the kernel color observed in wheat. Unlike the previous mouse example, in which three distinct and discrete phenotypes exist, wheat display a range of phenotypic outcomes dependent upon the individual's homozygosity or heterozygosity for each of two genes. Polygenic inheritance in humans can be seen in traits such as eye color and height. Scientists have d discovered a number of separate genes that influence height, which make possible a range of heights. Although the understanding of the genetic mechanisms resulting in human skin color variation is incomplete, it does present us with another great example of a polygenic trait. This simplified model illustrates the findings of genetic studies that have discovered a number of genes that affect human skin color, and that the inheritance of the, those genes happens independently of other physical features. When genes are found on separate chromosomes, they are said to be non-linked genes. Genes such as these would not cross over with one another, and they would assort independently, obeying Mendel's law. This illustration depicts two parent fruit flies, one with wild type wings and body color, and the other with vestigial wings and a black body. If the genes for wing type and body color were non-linked, they would have to sort independently, and the resulting offspring would display possible phenotypes in a one to one to one to one ratio. However, if genes are found to be present on the same chromosome, they're described as linked genes. In this illustration, we observe the same parents as before, with the exception that the genes for wing shape and body color are on the same chromosome. Since the wild type parent is heterozygous, after crossing over has occurred, 50% of the gametes are recombinant. This means that they carry a combination of alleles that did not exist in the parent's genotype. Linked genes are more likely to be inherited together, which is why the resulting offspring display a ratio that heavily favors the parental phenotypes. 
recombinant offspring, the gray-bodied vestigial wing flies and the black-bodied normal wing flies comprise a smaller proportion of the offspring. The frequency with which those recombinant offspring appear can be used to determine the positions of the genes in question on a chromosome. Although chromosome maps do not indicate the absolute position of a gene on a chromosome, or the specific number of nucleotide base pairs that separate genetic loci, they are useful in establishing the relative positions of a collection of genes. This model demonstrates that the body color and wing shape gene recombine 17% of the time. The body color gene, and that for an eye color gene called cinnabar, represented as CN, cross over 9% of the time, and the eye color gene crosses over with the wing shape gene 9.5% of the time. Having the recombination frequencies established allows us to determine the sequence of the genes, body color, then eye color, then wing shape, on this chromosome. You may have noticed that the recombination frequencies do not add up perfectly. 9 plus 9.5 is not 17. This is due to the fact that crossing over in prophase 1 sometimes results in non-sister chromatids twisting around each other more than once. Multiple chiasmata effectively return alleles to their original chromatid. Based on the data here, we can conclude that this occurs approximately 1.5% of the time. When genetic loci are close together, they do not cross over as frequently due to the short distance between them. But the farther apart genes are from one another, the greater frequency with which they will cross over. For multicellular organisms, some of a cell's genetic material is contained in mitochondria and chloroplasts. Non-nuclear genes such as those are transmitted from parent to offspring in a different manner than those contained in the nucleus. Gametogenesis in males results in four equally sized sperm cells. These cells are responsible for providing no more than a haploid nucleus. They contain very little cytoplasm and virtually no organelles. The mitochondrion they have has a singular function to provide energy for the cell's motility, but it is not genetically involved in the formation of a zygote. On the other hand, cytokinesis in the formation of egg cells is unequal and results in a single gamete containing a haploid nucleus along with all of the cytoplasm and organelles that are necessary for the zygote to develop properly. Therefore, an organism's mitochondrial DNA is always inherited through the female gamete. In humans and other sexually dimorphic animal species, that means mom. But non-nuclear genes are transmitted in the same way in plants as well. The male structure of a plant, called the stamen, has an anther that produces pollen grains containing sperm cells to provide a haploid nucleus to the offspring. At the base of the female part of the flower is the ovule that contains the egg. Just as with animals, the egg contributes cytoplasm, organelles, and a haploid nucleus. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.